Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Ah, this was all about the recap. Now let's again get back to inheritance because we started our discussion with inheritance. We wanted to know how inheritance of biological traits take place. So for that I was just giving you this recap. So what do we mean by inherited trait? Now what do we mean by trait? Trait is nothing but a characteristic. Any specific feature or any characteristic is known as a trait. Now when I say inherited trait, these are the characteristics which are being passed on from previous generation to the next generation. So anything like the color of your hair, the kind of hair you have, your height, complexion etc. They are all different traits of your body. So when we say inherited traits, now inheritance from previous generation provides, first of all it will provide the common basic body design. That is why all of us look like human beings. By looking at us itself, everybody will tell we are all human beings. Because the basic design is the same. And also it will give some changes in it for the next generation. That, that's what I was telling you, right? That if you look at this example, you can actually see that there are few things that have been just directly passed on from one generation to other. So this is first generation, this is second generation. So if you see the hair color has been simply passed on. But if you look at the eye color, that is something new. So the eye color is new. So nobody had blue eyes, but now it is new. So now this new eye color can get transmitted to the next generation. That is the generation 3. So these characteristics which get inherited from one generation to another, they are called inherited traits. So for example here, the hair color, the brown hair color is an inherited trait. A trait that is genetically passed down from one generation to another is called inherited trait. Now our concern is to understand how these traits are inherited. So some of the examples of inherited traits are, so let us consider hair color. So if you talk about hair color, there are so many possible options. It can be black, it can be brown, it can be uh, red, little reddish brown, it can be so many different colors are possible. It can be little burgundy in color. So these hair color can be inherited from your parents. Eye color which can be, it can be black, it can be blue, it can be brown. So there are so many different eye colors. If you talk about height, you talk about the shape of your feet. If, if you have observed carefully, you will see that different people tend to have different shape of their feet. Here on the screen also you see that one, one of them is a little rounded and short, the other one is a little tall with tall fingers and uh, it is a little lean. Ear lobes, some people have free pinna. So here if you see, this is attached. So this is attached pinna. Whereas here if you see, this is free pinna. Right? So different type of ear lobes are also present and these are all examples of inherited traits. So all these traits can actually be inherited from our past generation. Now the main question is, how do the traits get inherited? What happens inside that actually carries the traits from one generation to the next generation? So this is where we will talk about Mendelian genetics. So genetics we all know by now that it is the study of heredity. Now what is this Mendelian genetics? So Mendelian genetics is basically the genetics which was given by this famous person who is also known as the father of genetics that is Gregor Mendel. So he is Gregor Mendel. So we will now see how Gregor Mendel performed a series of experiments and he came up with some of the rules which are like the basic rules of inheritance in genetics. So let us start with how Gregor Mendel started his work on genetics. Now as I mentioned before also that even in those earlier ancient days People knew, people had some idea about this crossbreeding, about this that the sexual reproduction gave rise to some new traits. And people were making use of it to uh, crossbreed different plants and animals to get plants and animals of their desired choice. But they were not very much aware about the scientific basis of inheritance. So this was first brought into light by Gregor Mendel. And who was he? Uh, he was 
not a, 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 a traditional or a typical scientist as such, but he was somebody who wanted to be a teacher. However, he failed in the exams for teaching certificate. It's quite surprising, right? So what did he do? He started growing peas. Yes, right. The pea plant I'm talking about. He started growing pea plants and he did a lot of experiments, a series of experiments to understand how traits are being passed on from one generation to the next. Now, Mendel was somebody who had studied maths as well as science and he was the first person to apply mathematics to biology. Before that, nobody thought that there could be a link between biology and mathematics. He was the first person to give it a thought and that is how he came up with the rules of inheritance. So what did he do? He started studying inheritance in peace and since he was the first one who came up with these rules of uh, inheritance, so he is known as the father of genetics. He performed experiments with pea plants for seven long years. Yes, it took him that long. So for these many years, he kept on performing experiments with pea plants. And then what he observed, that's very really interesting. And that is what we are going to talk about now in the next few slides. And that is why all the rules, all the principles which were given by Mendel fall under Mendelian genetics. I mean, everything together we call it as Mendelian genetics. So what did he do? He basically kept count of individuals exhibiting a particular trait in each generation. So he kept on growing these, so generation after generation. And each generation he saw what were the different characteristics that were being observed. And again, then again he crossed uh, or he uh, cross he did cross pollination for different uh, varieties of pea plants and again observed what were the traits that were coming up in the next generation. So that is what he was basically doing and he was keeping a record of everything. So he was actually trying to mix mathematics in the form of statistics with his biological experiment. So many rules of heredity were established by Mendel and these laws together, these laws or rules were together known as the laws of Mendelian inheritance. The first question that comes to everybody's mind is, why did Mendel choose pea plant for his experiments? I mean, it was not a random choice. It was not that, okay, he suddenly thought of pea plant and he just started doing his experiments with it. No, it was not like that. So he gave it a thought and he found that pea plant was, was the most suitable organism for his experiments. And that is why he experimented with pea plants. Now, what were those advantages? Uh, which uh, which made him choose the pea plant. First of all, pea plant has several contrasting characters like height, flower color, seed color and shape. Now why do we need many contrasting traits? Now here in these experiments what he was trying to study was what happens if this plant is crossed with this plant. So what do we get? So that was his main agenda. Now, if you have a plant which has got flowers of different colors, for example, in case of pea plant, you have flowers which are violet in color. You also have flowers which are white in color. You have seeds which are green in color. You also have seeds which are yellow in color. You have uh, some plants which are very um, tall. You have some plants which are extremely short. You again have some plants where uh, the seed shape is round. You have some plants where the seed shape is wrinkled. So you actually see, you have so many different traits which have contrasting values in different plants. So if you choose something like this, it becomes easy to perform experiments because you can actually cross a tall plant with a short plant and you can see what happens, what is the result. So since many contrasting traits were present, this was important to see how and which traits are being passed on from one generation to another generation. And that is why he preferred using pea plant. Self-pollinated plant in nature. So normally they were self-fertilizing. I mean, there was no need to pollinate them artificially. You do not you never needed a pollinating agent as such. Why? Why were they self-pollinated plant in nature? Because here the reproductive organs were enclosed inside by the petals. You remember we spoke about the uh, reproductive organs of a flowering plant, the stamen and the carpel. Now the, since the stamen and the carpel were well enclosed inside the petals, so what happened? So what happened was that the stamen and the carpels, they were extremely close to each other. So they could easily pollinate themselves. So, Self-fertilization was easy 
and self fertilization for many generations helped him to get a pure line with stable traits i mean see you, you just cannot do it this way that okay you allowed a plant to self pollinate and whatever you got then you just recorded it in your record book that okay this is the final conclusion you cannot do like that so when you want to reach a conclusion you need to perform the same experiment multiple number of times so that you can be sure that whatever you are observing that is not happening just by chance that is how it has to happen so for that purpose what he had to do he had to self pollinate the plant for several generations so that he could actually know the stable traits of that plant cross pollination is easy to be done artificially so in this plant even cross pollination was quite easy now why he wanted to do cross pollination that was his agenda right if he wants to see what happens if a tall plant is crossed with a dwarf plant so what he has to do he has to do cross pollination because now he is talking about two different plants and with pea plant cross pollination also was quite easy we will talk about how he did cross pollination in the next slide it has a short life span now what is the advantage of having short life span now if a plant has short life span that means it will live only for a short period of time and after that it will produce many seeds and those many seeds can give rise to the next generation so that means if uh, he he performed his experiment for 7 years right so he could perform it in 7 years because the pea plant has a shorter life span had he chosen some other plant which has a longer life span he would have taken maybe some 20 30 years to do the same experiments or to reach the same conclusion because the faster one generation gets over and the next generation comes up the better it is for experimentation easy to cultivate now pea plants take less time to cultivate from one generation to the next generation so basically in one growing season one generation can be completely cultivated so that was also another advantage because if if had he chosen a plant which is which takes a lot of time to be cultivated then he would have been wasting time just for the plant just waiting for the plant to be cultivated right so that was also another advantage with the pea plant so because of all these advantages mendel chose pea plant for this experiment thank you please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again